So, what exactly is happening in the city? Bloodshed, a massacre, which is why we gotta hurry. You needn't fret, time flows differently in the Fable Sphere. We can stay here a week, yet outside, mere minutes will have passed. Watch out, pixies! Friendliest pixies I've met. We were put here to protect the Fable Sphere from intruders, meaning you. Oh, unicorns! We must catch them. We won't have to walk everywhere then. I call the pink one. Exciting, isn't it? Reminds me of my childhood. Reminds me of something altogether different. Care to elaborate? Rather not. Ignore him, he always lies. Aha, uh -huh. boy who cried wolf. Still does, I suppose. And doesn't, when they actually appear. The one and only. Listen, you little chit. Jack said you know what's become of his three beans. I don't know anything! Not one thing, and besides, watch out! Wolves! This'll be interesting. Right, let's get to it. Let's say for a minute you know what happened to the Red Beam. Where wouldn't it be? For certain no one swallowed it. Oh no, definitely not that. Of course not. But say someone didn't. Who would it be that didn't swallow it? A human. The most human human in the land of a thousand fables. Everyone! Wolves! Run! Bet you haven't heard what happened to the Blue Bean. Maybe? Not at all? Right? I've heard it lies about somewhere, out in the open. Just like that? No one guarding it? Nobody! Three times over! Help! Wolves! Yellow Bean. Don't know a thing about it, right? Hmm. It's somewhere very, and I mean very deep. So deep, in fact, it's completely underground. And who has it, hmm? A bold farmhand, who in no way and not at all awaits someone. Not in the slightest. Good folk! Wolf! Say that word one more time and I'll chop you up. Feed you to the fishes. Understood? All right, we should go. Watch out for wolves! Tough to talk to, that one. Was it, though? You need merely remember he always lies. Or more precisely, refers us the truth. Mm hmm. Where to now? I'm not sure. We should visit some of the other fables. The meaty ones, that is. Perhaps then Joss's hints will make more sense. It's just a few. Red Riding Hood, Piglets and Bears, three of each. And Goldilocks, of course. Then Longlocks, and a little lass who sells flint. Ah. Fine. Let's get to work. Incredible. You must have loved this place. I did at first. But children get bored quickly. Even tea parties with a whole cackle of princesses eventually turn dull and routine. What did you do then? Dropped a duck egg in a swan's nest once. That sort of thing. Stole the pee out from under the princess. Who sleeps to this day, I think. Oh look! The Emperor of Nilfgaard! He's come out to show off his new robe!
Watch my head! Damn it all! I swear that was the last time I drank with Redbeard. Oh, Siana, a bloody long time it's been. You've changed. Whereas you, not at all, big bad wolf. Though it seems you've started running with the wrong crowd. And who should I run with, eh? Thumbelina? One shot and she's under the table. But the bed, what brings you? Listen, looking for magic beans. Seen any? I was given one for safekeeping, but... Where is it? Talk! Shh, not so loud. Oh, I can be much louder than this. And resort to other means of persuasion. Uh, right there, the threats. Sianna to a T. Listen, I exist to restage a fairy tale. If you want to play at it, I'll be happy to oblige. But it won't be easy. The thing is, little red riding hoods popped her clogs. What? A thousand times they cut my gut open, filled it full of rocks, and drowned me in the river. So once you stopped coming, I decided to repay the little imp for all her loving labor. Good now, what's at the bottom of the well? She and the hunter. Which means we can't play, and I'm under no obligation to talk to you. Not about beans, nor anything else. So leave me be. Sort of. Hmm. Wolf's pretty cranky. Surprised? Think about it. He was cast in the role of the nemesis without ever asking for it. It's a dog's life, I tell you. So, what now? Don't worry. I'll play with him. No, rather, play him. I just need that little red hood. The piece of apparel, that is. Not the poor girl's corpse. That's a relief. You wish to help me? Here's your chance. Jump in the well and fish it out. Well, chop chop. Time to jump in the well. Break a leg. Any luck? Yep. Look what I got. That would never fit you. Give it to me. How do I look? Sorry. Don't know much about fashion. Yes. It shows. Let's go see the big bad wolf. Let me guess. You'll play the granddaughter. Mm-hmm. And you, the hunter. You again? I thought I was clear. I will not talk to you if little Red Riding Hood is not with you. Not a problem. Siana can take her place. What? <sighs> Very well. It's not as if I can forbid you. <laughs> Granddaughter, come closer, sweetie. But, Grandmama, what big eyes you have. The better to see you with, my dear. Granny, what big arms you have. The better to embrace you with, my dear. And, Grandmama, what big teeth you have. Eh? The better to eat you with, my dear. Not how to cut it.
remember what Joss said about the red bean. A human has it, and he definitely didn't swallow it. Mm-hmm. Gotta open his belly. Bottle caps, fake teeth, a corkscrew. Ah, here it is. Red bean. Well then, one step closer to our goal. What? Now I find myself wondering if you're just horribly discreet, or if those mutations completely scrubbed away your curiosity. Are you really not interested in what happened? In what became of me after they cast me out? Well, since you brought it up, I'd gladly hear the rest. Let's see. They had escorted you out of the duchy. Yes. And the noble knights of Toussaint and I didn't stop until we reached the Ketdu wilderness. They left me there alone, without a copper, in a torn lace dress, right when the frosts were setting in. They assumed something would eat me, or that I'd do everyone a favor and die of hunger. But as always, I failed to live up to expectations. I wandered the woods for a week, went purple from the cold, gnawed the bark from twigs. Finally, I saw a light among the trees. A campsite. They were bandits, bearded, drunk, spattered with blood. I was sure they'd rape me or kill me, or both. Take it neither happened? That's when I learned a robber and a murderer can be a better man than a knight in shining armor. They took me in, we set off for Nazaire, and I did what I could to repay them. I advanced in their ranks rather quickly. Eventually, I became their leader of the whole ragged band. Should have stayed there, maybe. Perhaps. Perhaps I should have forgotten everything, started a new life. But you know what? There came a point when I thought, you wanted a monster, then a monster you shall get. Been through a lot. I have. And throughout this time, my sister was stomping grapes and shagging minstrels on down bedding. She wasn't the one to banish you. And I'm not angry at her for that. I'm angry at her because she forgot about me. Right. We've had our chat. Come. Hey, there, in the trees. Some kind of camp. Show me what you got. You mean to cross the barbarous Barbarossa? Not on your life! Where's the key? Here it is. Got it. You're welcome. Oh, look! She laid a golden egg for you. <laughs> <laughs> if only all my employers were that generous. Would have preferred a magic bean, but not about to complain. Did you 
already travel all the way here for a contract. Nature of the job. I don't believe it. You must have had another reason. Hmm. Well, spent a few idyllic months in Beauclair some time past. Watch out! Pixies! Want to come back, I think. Recognize it? Once upon a time, a terrible dragon attacked Vizima. It took a clever young cobbler to bring about its defeat. Right. Every now and again, some village idiot tries to imitate him. And I gotta come in to clean up the mess. Just one thing and it's good. A half-digested sheep. Stuffed with tar and sulfur. Of course, but no bean. Does that not disgust you, poking about in a rotting corpse? Compared to the time I fought a Zuko in Vizima's sewers, this... <laughs> never mind. Don't feel like telling that story again. Damn it. The three little pig's homes. Oh, you know the story, don't you? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Looks like big bad's already blown down the houses of straw and sticks. Brick's the only one left. We should look inside. Remember Joss's words? Mm -hmm. One bean lies out in the open, guarded by three nobodies. Yeah, could be it. Witcher huffed and puffed, and look, got a bean. It cannot be. What cannot be? You actually have a sense of humor. Stunted a bit, but yeah, it's there. Well, well, aren't you full of surprises? What else are you hiding behind that gruff exterior? Not a bad singer. Do a pretty mean rendition of the Maids of Vicovaro, for instance. But some other time, maybe. But here we are chatting away when there's work to do. We must keep looking. So, do you like it here? No, got a problem with magic in general. Illusions, portals, all that. Don't trust any of it. Bow of old fashioned tastes, eh? I like that. Hey, watch it. Hey, watch it. Hmm. 
You slept on Thumbelina. That was my favorite tale. Huh? Why is that? Because it wasn't about a princess. Tales about princesses are insufferable. Tobacco? A dab of fist tech? Uh, remind me, what tail are you from? Sold flints when I was a lass, but no one bought them, so I branched out. Now I deal in snuffs, puffs, all sorts of fun things. What'll you have, sweeties? Magic beans. Do you have any? If it's not the new name of some kicker I already have, dearies, then no. But maybe you'd like some. Hey, where'd you get that ribbon? That's mine. Is that so? Then why was it lying in the bushes? Find his keepers, sweetheart. The ribbon. Mind explaining what the fuss is about? There's not much to explain. I got it from Aturius Vigo when I was a child. It was to protect me from evil. It clearly didn't work, given how I ended up. But it means a lot to you. How should I put this? I have so few mementos from my childhood, and the Ripon reminds me of the good old days, when I was someone else. Dears, could you continue this touching scene elsewhere, hmm? You're scaring away my customers. Give Sienna the Ribbon. Why not, huh? Sugar Plum. The only thing I hand out for free is a first hit. To get them to come back for a second, of course. For all else, you've got to pay. What if I asked you nicely? Ask me nicely and I might play you for it. A round of cards? All right, let's play. If you lose, you give me the ribbon. Don't get your hopes up. None can best me at Gwent.
I'm cold. You're good at this. A word to our skiffin. The ribbon's yours. Now skedaddle. Tell me. What? What you want in return. I'm not doing this out of the kindness of your heart. Don't want anything in return. I... Hmm. Thank you. Like I said. Show me what you got. This long logs tower? Indeed. It's even taller than I remember. Wait. What Joss said about the third beam, remember? In the possession of a bold farmhand somewhere deep beneath the ground. Yes, this must be it. Let's go. It always grapple up her braid in the past, but I don't see it anywhere. We'll find another way up. Could pull myself up here, and I'll have to make that jump. If you say so, I shall wait down here if it's all the same. Climbing is not my strong suit.
Knight Strange. Doesn't look like he's out of any fairy tale I know. Wonder how he got here. In past times, Anoriette and I would occasionally run into them here. You see, knights errant far outnumber princesses in the real world. So some knights would sneak into the playroom, then into this land, in search of their fairy tale damsels. That's all. Only to be shredded to bits by a swarm of pixies. Irony's delicious. something to show us. Careful. It's not to be trusted. Nothing. So? Got the bean, but long locks. Hmm. Seems she got sick of waiting for a knight in shining armor. Can you blame her? Men these days, dandies and fops all. That why you cozied up to a vampire? Dead laugh was a tool, and only a tool. Too bad he didn't know that. I trust no one. Learned that long ago. Now it's his turn. To use him. Was that your plan from the start? No. At first, I was simply intrigued. Do you know the story? It was in Matina, a few years past. I'd gone there to pass some loot off to a fence I know. We were hashing out the terms when in walked Deathlove. He said he'd come to sell a silver candlestick. and gripped it through a cloth. That caught my eye. I followed him out, observed him from a distance. But he caught on quickly. Yeah, superhuman senses will do that. He turned down a blind alley. I followed. 
He jumped out from behind a crate, baring his teeth. I suppose he'd wanted to frighten me. Alas, he didn't in the least. After all, I'm a monster too, am I not? A higher vampire and you were unimpressed? Don't know if that's brave or just plain foolish. I've always had a way with ostensibly dangerous, quiet types. That's supposed to be about me too? Oh, mother, I hate to disappoint you, Geralt, but your belly button is not the center of the known world. Though, you do remind me of him a bit, stifling all emotions inside you, ever feigning indifference. You see, when I met Deadlove, I... Somehow I knew, call it intuition, that he meant me no harm, that he was trying to frighten me off, for he too was scared. Now do you understand? I guess. What happened then? We talked, then met up once, twice, three times. Enough that he became infatuated. I truly enjoyed it at first. But only at first. He did not love like a man, but like an animal, madly, deeply, unconditionally, wildly. To return such a feeling, anyone would be hard-pressed, let alone someone as twisted as I am. So there came a day you just up and disappeared? Yes. There was no other way. Let's just be friends, or I don't deserve you. He'd never have understood that sort of thing. But then, once I decided to return, clean up some old affairs, I remembered him, and concluded he could still be of use. Playing with fire, that. Definitely. And either I'll get burned, or I'll burn all else down. No other options. Got a history with Detlaf now. So this meeting will be different. Not afraid? I can handle him. Mm-hmm. Sure about that? You look at him as a witcher and see a monster. I... I know what he's really like. You needn't worry. It's time to go. Just a bit more work and we'll be able to say sort off to this fecking fable sphere. Now we must plant them by the path near Longlock's tower, then prepare to meet the giant. Given me no choice. This is the spot. Pull out the beams. Wait! Why? The stalk will sprout abruptly. Very abruptly. We must be careful. All right, toss them! Something's always got to go wrong. The home stretch. Admire the view later. First, we must deal with... Uh... 
him. Creature. That was one tough son of a wench. I told you this land had gone ape mad, though I did not expect it to be so severe. Can't help thinking you might have done that on purpose. Why ever would I have? To get rid of your guard, your captor. Getting close to the exit at this point. Probably think you don't need me anymore. Well, you're wrong. You still stand to be quite useful to me. Yeah, I know. Gotta get you out of here. Come on. Wait, that's not what I meant. I need you for something far simpler and far more pleasant. Well, don't just stand there and stare. I need a man, Geralt, and I'm not afraid to say it. I've no idea what awaits me once we leave this place. Treat it as my last wish. Another time, another place, maybe. No offense. None taken. You spoke clearly, you spoke honestly. It's fine. Come. The exit's this way. Curious. 
Why do you want the heart of Toussaint and the Ducal wine? They were my right, my due. Doubt we would have figured you out if you hadn't tried to get them. Know that, don't you? I do, and I regret nothing. One lives but once. Here, we need but jump into the well. You first. in a fountain? Not terribly practical. It was a secret passage. Anarieta and I would use it. Hide from your governess, which luckily she noted down in her diary. Thus, I knew where to await you. Never mind that. Has the young lady agreed to help clean up the mess she's made? She has. And stop treating me as if I were a child. Would you prefer I treated you like the lying manipulator you are? Calm down, both of you. But... No buts. Let's go. Really want to be done with this. Nice place, isn't it? Offers a lovely view of the valley. On a clear day, you can see the outlines of Duntine. Is it, though? A ruin like any other, I think. Ah, uh, so sensitive. So aware. Honestly, what did Declaff ever see in you? Perhaps he'll tell you himself. Mm-hmm. It's always a bit nerve-wracking meeting an ex, especially so when said ex is a vampire. I doubt he'll be in the mood for jests. I know. Oh, may I be honest? Yes, I'm nervous. I really would prefer just to run off. I gave my word I would help, I know. But how much is that worth? Yet I owe him this meeting, and that is that. Let's get ready. Dedloff will be here any moment now. Feign it all. That 
that which bound us was a ruse. Dead love. It's not that simple. I... Oh no. It's very simple. You either deceived me or not. In forgiving you, I grieve. For now, we must part. What? But how? The ribbon? Ha! Seems I've been fooled again. She will pay for this sooner or later! She will pay! You never should have meddled with her! Gods. <laughs> 
Gone. I can't let I insist. a smashing ensemble. You wear it well. Shut up. I look like a twit. The caftan is sewn of the best fabrics available, and according to the best tailoring practices. But one must have a modicum of taste to appreciate this. Even the most exquisite robes cover only deficiencies in beauty, never in refinement. usually wear something different, better suited to my trade. Got nothing against this particular outfit, though. Just don't exactly feel comfortable in it. And I despise formal occasions. Hmm. Nothing one can't get accustomed to. Now, be so kind as to stand still. All that being as it may, Toussaint's highest honor, the Order of Vitis Vinifera, demands appropriate attire. The Duchess cannot be expected to drape the medal on a suit of armor caked in mud. Palace protocol places enormous emphasis on form, virtuous tradition, etiquette. Huh. A tradition which values appearances ahead of all else, which calls for lordly, glistening triviality and misplaced generosity. Sound wistful. Pensive, Regis. That because they refuse to buy you a new outfit? Hardly. It's the tone I ever adopt when I find myself pondering, which, believe it or not, happens quite a lot. Besides, I've no need for a new outfit as I shall not be attending the ceremony. Why not? Because unlike you, I don't have to. I shall begin to pack my belongings instead. I trust you'll join me later, once you're richer by a medal and a fascinating new experience. Count on it. Hmm. Ceremonies. Medals honoring virtues. Just keeps coming up. I've had no reprieve either. And I keep thinking of the last great virtue, compassion. It's the one piece of the puzzle that never seemed to fit. Mean you suddenly believe the five virtues theory? After all we've revealed? It's not a question of belief, superstition, or old wives' tales. It's a conclusion derived through exercising pure logic. Siana planned everything in advance. Had we not stopped her, surely there'd have been a fifth victim. One the gossips would have associated with a lack of compassion. Her plans don't matter now. Can't act on them. Ask the messenger who delivered my invitation to the ceremony. Siana's in the palace. Courtiers pressured the Duchess to lock her in a tower. Do you care not a whit who else was in her black book? We've some time before the ceremony. We could still chat with that boot-cleaning urchin. He was the one to pass the victims' names to Detlaff. Perhaps we missed something. Regis, Boot Black didn't say anything about making deliveries when we talked to him. How do you know he handled the letters? While you basked in glory and tried on new formal wear, I conducted a little investigation of my own. 
you'd be very proud to see how I conducted myself. I began by concocting an ample supply of boot wash for our enterprising young friend. I'd observed that among street folk, amidst their society as a whole, reciprocity takes precedence over all other codes, and thus no good deed goes unrewarded. Of course, the same holds true for malicious or destructive deeds. The letters, what's the connection? When the boot black arrived to collect his bucketful, he hinted he knew more. Simply put, we'd failed to ask the proper questions when we chatted earlier. It took a bit more tongue loosening, but ultimately he spoke. He admitted he'd handed Detlaf the letters. He knew this information was valuable to me. In providing it, he was simply repaying me. All in all, why not check up on that? We'll go together, assuming we're done here. I am done, yes. It lies in your hands now to see if you are able to present my handiwork at the ceremony with the dignity it is due. Or if you will first destroy it, crawling about the city's underbelly. Promise to be careful. Oh, it's the swordsman. Good to see you. Here for a spiffing? Dirty boots are a stain on professional dignity, you know. Step on up. Need to ask you something. Yet again? Go on, then. I'm a proponent of free speech, and I will gladly tell you all I know. But why not get your boots shanked while we jabber? Guess they could use a spit and polish. Then I shall take advantage as well. A friend of mine used to say boots should be as clean as the soles that wear them. Clean boots, clean soles. A fine slogan. How's business? Well enough. I can't complain. Though it'd be even better for certain folk to sit down for a shine as they stood and chatted. Man in the frock coat. You passed him some letters, remember? Why, of course. I'm young, got a mind like a steel trap, but... If you're about to tell me this information will cost me, forget it. How'd you get those letters? Beckers brought them. Beggars. Tell us more about them. How many were there? Why, four. One for each letter. Just four? Sure you didn't get a fifth? I can't count, you know. Remember anything else? These beggars have anything in common? What? Come now. Each was different. Some had mismatched boots, others had no boots at all. Oh, I know! They all had no home! Kid, my patience is starting to run a little thin. Now think hard. Where'd they get the letters? They picked them up? Get them from someone? I don't know. They'd come, hand me a letter, and walk away. I asked no questions. Geralt, allow me to ask a question. Listen, lad. I'll be glad to mix another batch of that bootshine for you. But you must focus now and tell us all you know. Where can we find the beggars? Well, at the shelter, most like. Where's that? Everyone knows. It's just round the corner. Up those stairs, then right. Thanks, kid. For your trouble. We must visit the shelter. Look around inside. You've to move your little camp elsewhere, got it? This is a decent district. We need no filth folk. You? What do you want? To talk. Here, that's a waste of breath. We've tried it, only to tire our lips. We'll use other means of persuasion now. Gentlemen, calm, please. Either get out along with these flea-ridden vagabonds, or we'll toss you all out. Our patience is gone. This place is no longer a rank refuse dump. Scram! Decent folk live here. The shelter. Them living here bothers you. Question is why. Look, Ballard. 
Another defender of the poor, fighter for justice. Damn nuisance. We for our women and young folk living next door. When even grown men fear to walk past such rabble. Decent folk you mention. Mean yourselves. Why? Do you doubt it? Hell yes. Hear that, Artois? He poking insults us. On our own turf. We should step aside, good fellow. My friend is perfectly capable of settling this unfortunate dispute on his own. You are one damn son. I stump my guns in fear. around your spine. Take a hint. Come, time to go. I thank you so much for your aid. I tried to reason with them, but they'd have beat me blue had you not come along. I'm grateful. Immensely. What did they want from you? They are neighbors. Wish me to take my folk, the shelter, elsewhere. They dislike that I help the beckers. I do not oppose going elsewhere were we to have somewhere to go. But you've come with a problem, have you? My turn to aid you. Need some information. Looking for a man who might have mentioned the boot black in Rue de Garl. The boot black? A feisty lad. I know him. Any of your, uh, wards supposed to meet him recently or soon? Forgive me. Those I help and I are not so close that I would know. But should you wait, they'll all soon come for their meal. You can question them yourselves. Thanks. We'll wait. Nice of you to let us. My dears, I've a matter to address before I serve the soup. These two gentlemen have some questions of you. Pay attention. Answer in brief. For if you draw it out, your soup will go cold. And we wouldn't want that, would we? Recently, four of you delivered sealed letters to the boot black. I know this. Does anyone know what the gentleman means? Go on, speak up. Romain? Why should I squeal? We were all told not to mention the letters. We all swore. You can tell me, Romain. You were given a letter and you delivered it, right? Good work, Romain. Thank you. Who else? I got the one too. I gave it to the boot black. And Freshy, he got one. But he can't tell you, as he's not here. I still have mine. I'm to deliver it two days after the Feast of St. Barnabas. It's a matter of importance to the duchy. Hand it over, or I'll take it from you, plain and simple. But I was to deliver it personally. Let no one else see it. That is what she said, and she was frightening. You ought to heed folk who are kind and honest. This man helped me a short while ago, helped all of us. If this individual threatened you, you need not keep the promise you made. All right, take it. I didn't want to see the boot black anyways. It's always muddy there.
What is it? Another name, truly? See for yourself. Well, well. I... I must say, even I did not expect this. This time, you will see to our Duquesa. It seems we underestimated Siano rather grossly. Judging by this, Detloff was literally supposed to tear her heart out. Yet first you must snap her neck. Puzzling. Puzzle complete now. Alas, the matter ceased to be a tantalizing brain tease and has turned incredibly grave. We've proof of a plot to assassinate Toussaint's ruler. We've proof of a coup d'etat. Duchess was to be Detloff's last victim. Siana planned it from the start. Indeed. The logical conclusion, Geralt. Four seemingly random victims to start. The virtue's their only link. Enough to get folk talking about a righteous, vengeful beast. Obscured the victim's links to Siana, even as she had those she despised killed off one by one, leaving the Duchess for last. Had she managed to fulfill her plan, none would have questioned the reasons. Most would have thought Anna Henrietta had died for her sins. She was known to show a hard heart on many occasions, ample proof of a lack of compassion. Why would Sienna murder her own sister? Out of envy? To take power? From an inborn penchant for evil? Yes, yes and yes. All seem likely, and none are mutually exclusive. But if you'd like to know for certain, you could always ask her yourself. Actually, love to learn her motives. Praiseworthy, I suppose. Sometimes one should stare evil in the face. Seems a bit strong, no? She used my friend as her tool for killing. I believe I've every right to condemn her, but I support your lust for the truth. Some philosophers think empirical examination the sole path to knowledge. I believe you mentioned the Duchess keeps Siana locked up. Courtiers were insisting on a harsher punishment. Much harsher. Think Anna Henrietta had to protect her sister from a lynch mob as much as she wanted to protect her subjects from a criminal. One way or another, she's locked away in a secluded wing of the palace, awaiting trial before a court of law. I'd need to get past some guards to see her. Coming with? Of course not. I shall await you at Mayor Lachey's long. I'll not risk entering the palace after Detlaf and his minions rampage. Besides, I vastly prefer the company of a simple mug of mandrake brew to that of the Duchess's vile sister. So, said straight up, it means you're going off to get drunk because you hate Siana. I've never been fond of categorical statements of that kind, but I admit I could not vouch for my behavior in her presence. She treated Detlaf cruelly, caused his death in the end, and now this, atop all that, no, Geralt. I will not go with you. I will await you at the cemetery. Work here, not paying workers. A witcher. That could only mean trouble. <laughs> Welcome to Beauclair, city of love. Probably on an empty stomach. Halt! Need to see Siana urgently. In the matter of? Want to talk to her. It's important. Want to talk? Go see your gran at tea time. Not one locked up on the Duquesa's orders. No doing without special permission. Period. Found some information important to her case. Need an explanation. Urgently. 
Ah, fine then. You're that witcher who solved the murders, no? Then you've my permission, but only for a few minutes. Promise to be brief. The Witcher will speak with the inmate. You can take a momentary break. As long as it's truly but a moment. Highly irregular, this. Have you come to see how I fare? I'm fine, thank you. Artorius's Ripon worked wonders. It's a shame they took it from I me. I know for... who the fifth victim was supposed to be. Goodness, you're simply a compulsive snoop. I'm in prison. Deadlaf is dead. Could you not just drop it? Sienna, stop pretending you couldn't care less. I know it's an act, and it's really starting to wear. Why do you want to kill her? For such an accomplished investigator to ask about the obvious? Come now, Geralt. Why do you think? Because she turned her back on you? Then banished all memory of you. Bravo, Geralt. Yet another riddle solved, and your sick curiosity sated. Well, what now? Off to share your discovery with Anna Henrietta. Though she's no longer in danger, true. But she very well might add a little something to your reward. Definitely gonna tell her. Not necessarily for the coin, though. Then why do it at all? She ought to know. If only because you'll probably try to kill her again if she ever lets you out. I probably will. Perhaps, just for a second, you could stop dwelling on all the wrongs folk have done you and forgive her? Why should I? For old time's sake. You loved each other once. Please. I don't know who fed you that rubbish, but... Read your governess's diary. You played together. We're inseparable. Honoria'd get you into trouble sometimes, sure. But there were also times she stood up for you. When you had nightmares, only she could calm you. Time eats away at memories. Distorts them. Sometimes we only remember the good. Sometimes only the bad. If she loved me so, why did she wash her hands off me? Forget me, hmm? Sienna, you were exiled when she was how old? Twelve? Thirteen? She was a child. What was she supposed to do? Rebel? Organize a coup? Steal your father's seal and forge a pardon? She was powerless. Wiped you from her memory not because she didn't care, but because your departure was traumatic for her. She forgot because that was the only way she could handle the pain. Ugh. You really want a happy ending, don't you? Ah, with all of us living happily ever after. Go, Witcher, or they'll give your medal to another. And that would be a shame. Farewell, Sienna. Commander de la Tour would like to see you. Shall we go at once? Let's go. Want to see him too. Damien. Geralt! It's about time. Ready for the ceremony? Got some important information. Anna Henrietta was supposed to be Detloff and Siana's fifth victim. You are certain of this? Completely. Found proof. 
Inconceivable. How could she? The murders, the mayhem she brought down on the city, were they not enough? She sought to strike down her own sister, her liege. Traitor. I must alert my men. Enlarge the Duchess's honor guard. Make certain Sylvia Anna is closely watched during the questioning. I'll see to it personally. I thank you, Witcher, for alerting me. And I appreciate your attentiveness. Let's begin the ceremony. Come with me. The Duchess awaits. In the guild's name, I beg your assistance, your enlightened highness. Without barrels, production will come to a stop, and it will be the end of us. You lost them all in the fire. These are horrible tidings. Oh, we are most dreadfully saddened. Yes, your enlightened highness all. Once the beasts had clawed their way into the warehouse, the whole place went up in flames. I shall dispatch a palace guardsman to examine the site of the blaze. If things are as you say, fitting compensation shall be paid from the Ducal Treasury. Thank you, your enlightened highness. Your Grace, Geralt of Rivia has arrived. My dear subjects, we come now to our next point of business. Of all the duties which fall upon my shoulders, as the ruler of this dominion, this duty is dearest to my heart. For now, we shall award the Order of Vitis Vinifera, Tucson's highest honor. Geralt of Rivia, slayer of the Beast of Beauclair, step forth. We bestow the distinction upon the Witcher, who saved Beauclair from the terrible beast. Such is our desire. May this symbol serve as a reminder to all that the Witcher shall forever remain a friend of Beauclair. In more familiar terms now, I thank you immensely, Geralt. Damien has your reward for you. After all, it was but a contract. Thank you. I have a small surprise for you, in addition. I give you more than a dozen barrels of Son Real, a wine normally reserved for the ducal table. The gustatory experience of a lifetime awaits. Are you content? Feels like a... Second distinction. I'm honored. Thank you. I trust you shall make good use of it. In a moment I shall speak to Siana. Will you assist me? You returned my sister to me. Yet you also showed me her horrendous deeds. As head of state, I must judge her fairly, but she is my sister. Thus my heart bleeds for her. If my presence will help in any manner, of course I'll stay. We shall now question a person implicated in the murders which recently ravaged our fair city of Beauclair. Captain de la Tour, show Sylvia Anna in. The Witcher will take part in our talk. The Duchess requested I be present. You have committed crimes. Grave crimes. 
Yet you are my sister, and my heart does not allow me to treat you as a common criminal. Thus I have asked Geralt to advise me, as one impartial. I shall now hear what he has to say. Bitterness consumes Sianna. She had cause to resent many of the court of Beauclair. I know her reasons, understand them even. But I can't condone the actions she chose to take. What is he talking about, Sianna? You know exactly what. I was forcibly exiled, remember? To your benefit. You knew well the throne would then be yours, though I was the elder. The ministers I can understand. They've hated me since I was a child, so it me a poor prospect for the wife of a duke. I even understand our parents. I'd always sensed the problem. They simply feared me, for I dared to be free. That fabricated curse, it fell into their laps. A gift from above that brought relief. But you... Your dagger hurt most. You were my honorietta, dammit. My darling little sister. Now do you understand, Witcher? She betrayed me. Claim to understand them all? Why'd you come back for revenge? Have them all cut down, then? They deserved my vengeance. They detested me, all of them, as long as I can remember. But Honorietta understood me. Once. She was all I could cling to. Her betrayal hurt the most. You were children, then. You and your sister both had no control over what happened. You're wrong, Witcher. She had control. Remember, dear sister? The day they banished me from the palace. Of course, I'd had the idea to pelt the Nilfgaardian envoy with fish bladders, which we filled with rancid suet on a lark. And which you set afire at the last to impress me, I imagine. And I admit, you did. Hit him right in his hideous bold patch. Never laughed so hard in my life. But when it came time to find the culprit, you said not a word. I took all the blame and all the punishment. It's true. I did not stand up for you. I was too afraid. The council was unanimous. They listed all my offenses. My flights from the palace, supposed acts of cruelty, inappropriate friendships. They cast me out, but you, the only one to understand me, you cowered in a corner, lifted not a finger to help. Not before, not after. You never tried to find me. That's not true. I searched for you. Sent out knights, gathered tidings from without. You did not wish to be found. Since the day you vanished, I have lived with the knowledge that I failed you. I'm sorry, dear sister. Can you forgive me? ceremony it was short perhaps for you as you ducked out early the others are probably just getting started the drunkenness never ends in this quaint realm not so fond of Toussaint after all are we oh this place is like a strong wine Geralt good in small sips
How do you find my personal brew? Not too strong. Just right. Credit the local mandrake of the Alrauna Diabolus variety for that. The tubers which grow in this area's volcanic soil have an altogether unique flavor profile and display a remarkably uncommon dark brown tint. Fascinating. All I can say is this batch turned out excellent. Indeed. It might be wise to stockpile some roots for the future. Would you care to accompany me? You decide to go root picking now? It's dark out. Ah, oh, Geralt. Even were I generously to assume it had simply slipped your mind that I am a vampire and thus need no light to see, I'd never believe you had also forgotten that you likewise have absolutely no trouble seeing in the dark. So, shall we? If you think it's a good idea, let's go. But I think you might be forgetting one thing. Fresh mandrake root of this variety is highly toxic, even to a witcher. Ah, not a problem. I never forget matters of safety and hygiene in alchemy. Here, gloves and a mask. Don them, and you shall be in no danger. Thanks. Right then, let's go. This moonlight makes me oh so dreamy. Penny for your thoughts. Let me guess. Succubus twins? Uh, no, I was thinking about... Oh, how anything can look interesting when properly lit. Even an old necrophage corpse? You've not an ounce of refinement in you, have you? Sucker go. Won't be easy to track down. He's a vampire after all. Damn it, where'd you go? Regis! I did what I had to do! Those Bruxae, they called you a traitor. Alas, we have a very simple code of honor, we vampires. So simple you might call it trivial. Either one is with us, unconditionally, regardless of the circumstances, or... Won't let it go, will they? They will not. Fortunately, we have another rule, an unwritten one, and just as trivial as the first. It is neatly summarized in the saying, out of sight, out of mind. That is why I must leave Toussaint. For a vastly long time, most like. Yeah, I get it. <sighs> Let us make for my camp. I've an overwhelming desire to have another drink. then develops gently, rising to a, a startling finish. Don't you think? Not much of a connoisseur. Then it is high time you started your education. After all, the Corvo Bianco vineyard is now yours. By the way, I left a gift for you in your new home, on the nightstand. <laughs> Thanks. Mind telling me what it is? Ugh, a trifle. That will nonetheless be useful should you need mutagens. Incidentally, have you thought about what you'll do with your prize? Shall you hang your swords over the mantle and take to pruning vines? Uh, don't really know yet. I'd find the life of a hard-working vintner too tempting one day. 
Or maybe I'll just stick to the path, go on roaming, staring up at the stars after laying my bedroll at the roadside. Ah, roadsides, bedrolls, and the sky above. I sense some poetry coming on, which of course brings to mind Dandelion. I can remember a night, not too far from here if I'm not mistaken. We hid in a cave while a blizzard raged all about. Does that sound at all familiar? How could it not? We just set off to rescue Ciri from Vilgefortz. Oh, our encounter with Vilgefortz. That is something I do not remember so fondly. That first stain, Beauclair, far calmer than this one. Seemed like a land straight out of a fairy tale back then. Its sole problem, cellar's too small to accommodate all that wine. Appearances, Geralt. Appearances, like Mamoons and Dopplers, deceive. So what did become of Vilgefortz? Killed him. Sure wasn't easy, though. What about you? Any idea where you'll go? Distance is of the essence. I thought I might venture south. Nilfgaard? Why ever not? The Nilfgaardians are a modern society. None there believe in vampires anymore. This fact alone could be very useful to one wishing to remain incognito. Hmm. Interesting point of view. <sighs> I so don't feel like going anywhere. Sit here a while longer? So we shall, my friend. We have witnessed, and in fact on several occasions incited, many great and weighty events. After all that toil, I believe we deserve a bit of a rest. That we do. go home. What will the morrow bring? Those Apologize, poor diddler. Oh. Master Witcher, some unknown individual barged into the residence. I resisted as best I could, but to no avail. Who is it? Alas, they did not do me the basic courtesy of introducing themselves. Unexpected as ever. And beautiful as ever. Won't you even ask why I've come? Or how I found you? Wouldn't get a straight answer anyway. Quite true. 
Used to bother me all your secrets. Now I know if you have something to tell me, you'll tell me. Don't need to ask. I missed you, Geralt. Madly. Come outside. We can hold hands and stare at the sky. Like some shitty two-crown romance. Brought quite a few books. Let me guess. Working on a new spell? Not at all. These aren't grimoires, just pleasure reading. The name of the Orchid. A widower for half a year. Huh. <laughs> Always thought you too busy to make time for something as impractical as pleasure reading. Because I was. But now, I'm not. A few weeks ago, I awoke to the realization that I know not what to do next. I have no plan. I have no goal. And you know what? I like that. Finally, I can stop thinking about politics and focus on what's important to me. Which is why I came here. Liking Toussaint so far? Hmm. The landscape's lovely and the towns are charming, no question about that. But? But the southern sun plays havoc with my wardrobe. To be blunt, wear black down here and you're pretty damn hot. Hmm. Might need to think about changing your color palette. Off-white and pea-green, for instance. <laughs> and I'll wear scents distilled from turnips and daisies. I think I shall simply stay in the shade. And you'll bring me cool drinks. At regular intervals. Bring you whatever you want. You know? Feels kind of strange having a home. Hmm, I must say I never pictured you owning real estate. <laughs> Was something of an accident, but I'm not about to complain. Yen, back then, before we fought the hunt, said you wanted to run away with me to the world's end. This vineyard, good enough? Hmm, yes, although there's one thing missing. Namely? I shall give you a hint. It's large, white, has four legs, category taxidermy. Oh yeah, the unicorn. Fine, you can bring it down here. I knew you'd see things my way. Ever thought this day would come? Me and you, peace and quiet, bees buzzing, birds chirping. I almost regret delaying so long before coming to you. I was quite the silly goose. You have doubts? Though I imagine it might have been hard coming after me. Always were proud as a peacock. Please, Geralt. I'm not like other sorceresses to feel that following someone means my wings have been clipped. Ooh, watch what you say about your colleagues. Remember, it's an ill bird that fouls its own nest. Well said, Witcher. You're not only handsome, but wise, too. I feel a bit like the cat that got the canary. Yeah, and I'm... Mm. Damn it, you win. This time. Ha! How'd that start, anyway? Our duels in wordplay. Forgotten. It was out of vernissage in Bannard. You started it to keep from going mad with boredom. I remember finding your sense of humor both grown-worthy and somehow endearing. Never change, Geralt. I beg you. So, talk again later? Of course. I'm not going anywhere. 